Icelock here with Nocturne Gaming, back with more Legends of Eidolon, and today we're taking a look at a Bubonic Conjurer Guide. There are several really nice benefits to having an active Bubonic Conjurer. The first one is going to be the primary thing, which is Cranium Cooking, which allows us to progress our alchemy by ridiculous amounts of time. I've seen up to 450,000 seconds of alchemy progress, and that can run every 8 to 12 minutes, depending on how many monsters you're killing and the map that you're using. This allows us to really push alchemy up leveling up our cauldrons in their boost menu, unlocking new bubbles, and even generating enough liquid to level up your bubbles even more, such as grind time. This allows you to get more class EXP and the cycle continues. The next big thing is leveling up your liquid cauldrons through the use of the new Equinox buffs. As you can see, you can push to ridiculous levels on your cap and rate, which will allow you to continue scaling this higher and higher the longer that you run this build. Some of the other more minor benefits are going to be generating more income. On your money per hour, this is just used as a reference point to how much you're scaling up depending on your green mushroom kills and the lab bonus. But it also generates uh, money every time you kill a mob and through the use of raise dead, you're able to generate mobs every second, which means you're basically killing the entire map every one to two seconds. There is some tick rate lag in there, so don't quote me on the exact time frame on it. However, the uh, next benefit is going to be pushing through the new world. With World 6 out right now, everybody's rushing to get through these mobs, generating more money, getting new mob drops, increasing the number of green stacks that you have, and using the Bubonic Conjurer is one of the best ways and most efficient ways to get through the new worlds. So let's get started with our talents. I have gone over some of these talents with my previous Shaman build, but some will change because we're doing an active build this time. So things like AFK gain rates aren't going to affect us too much. So keep that in mind for later parts as well. So on your talents, the first priority is always going to be sharpened axe and gilded sword. From here, we want overclocked energy, and then we're going to kind of prioritize either book of the wise for more wisdom and then mana booster to give you more mana to benefit overclocked energy. We are going to have to come back to this page as we fill in other talents, but that's okay. If you have spare points from this stage, you can put into quickness boots for more accuracy if you need it. And then you can always set this up to be an AFK build as well, loading up your AFK fighting uh, rate. Keep in mind that you do get some damage bonuses from Alchemy for leveling up Fist of Rage and Lucky Clover and your quickness boots, as and all of these things will help you in a minor way on your damage, but the main thing is going to be the talents that I've shown here. Moving on to tab two, our priority is going to be power overwhelming. And then we want our base wisdom and our knowledge's power to give you more wisdom stat or more damage from your wisdom stat. After this, untwisted robes is a great benefit. Depending on the gear that you have, this may be better than the base wisdom. From here, it's mana overdrive to again, upgrade that overclocked energy. And then if you have spare points left over, this is when we look up, look at chopping it easy to get a little bit more damage. From here, everything on this page is optional for an active build, but we can get a little more damage from your next, and you can put points into your uh, mini fireball if you're gonna use this character to AFK at times. But everything else is completely optional other than what I'm showing you on this page. Moving on to tab three, this is where things start becoming a little more of a priority based as our main, our build is primarily based on cranium cooking. So I wouldn't recommend running this build unless you have a good amount of talent points. I'm talking probably in the neighborhood of a thousand talent points on this build for it to be truly effective but you can start anywhere and you'll upgrade this over time. So our priority is gonna be maxing out cranium cooking as well as the uh, busy brew in here, as this is gonna give you more brew speed for your character. Um, and then you can also get sharing some smarts. This is a completely optional talent, but it is gonna help level up things like your void walker if you put them in the same cauldron with your active boobo. The next mandatory part of this build is going to be Tent Eye Cycle, and this is going to be what we get all of our gains from. So you need to have a minimum of 200 points in this for it to be effective. The main reason of this is at 200 points, it decreases your cooldowns 
by three seconds instead of two, which gives us a huge increase. Now, if you can afford to max it out, you're going to get a 75% chance instead of a 67% chance, so it is worth maxing it out. The other mandatory part of this build is Auspicious Aura, which is going to basically kill a lot of mobs very quickly for you, and you don't have to worry about the Poison Cloud having a tick rate, which slows down your kills per hour in the Auspicious Aura. So it is worth maxing out to the best of your ability. And from here, we're looking for more damage. At this point, Wiz Wumbo is gonna be our next biggest priority, and then Viral Vials for more damage. Everything else on this page becomes optional. However, I do like to max out the uh, Fantasia flasks on this character because I do have enough points to upgrade Farsight. And then if you can get a little more damage from your ovals, it is worth it as well. I also level up Bubble Breakthrough so I don't have to switch back and forth um, whenever I'm trying to unlock new bubbles and it gives me increased alchemy ex experience as well. So moving on to tab four, and this is again where we're gonna look at making sure our build does the most damage that we can. So your priority is going to be maxing out Flatulent Spirit as this does give you a ton of poison clouds on the ground. It will generate poison clouds for you. You do not have to use Chemical Warfare. However, we do need points in Chemical Warfare as our poison cloud damage from the Flatulent Spirits is based on the, the Chemical Warfare damage. So maxing this out is going to give you 20% damage on your clouds instead of 5%, and uh, the, the poison canisters are gonna last a little bit longer. The other mandatory part is raise dead. So these three talents are mandatory for this build to work. They all kind of work together to make sure the mobs are raising up together. The, the flatulent spirits are spreading your poison forever and then your chemical warfare is increasing the damage that your flatulent spirits are doing. So this is the mandatory section of the build. From here, we're looking for more damage. So I recommend Symbols of Beyond up to the nearest 20 breakpoint that you can get to. So getting it to 240 would be better. I have enough talent points so it doesn't hurt me to max it out. From here, more damage from Utmost Intellect. You can get some more kills per hour on Memorial Skull to help you with the portal pushing. A little more wisdom from Skill Wiz if you have the spare points. And then of course, Wired and Power to get you a little more damage based on your laboratory levels. This does not scale very well, so it's not a high priority on, for me. It's it, honestly 68 weapon power at the stage of the game we're in is not a lot, so I would not prioritize this in your build. From here, any way else you can get more damage is good. If you have points you can put into Plague Stricken, we use a boxing glove in this build, so it doesn't really help us a whole lot uh, because it doesn't proc, I believe, on the boxing gloves, but it's still worth it if you plan on using a staff. You can get a little more damage from the family guy, but this is our general build that we want. We do need to go back into tab one to put more points into Book of the Wise since we did upgrade that. That's 600 more base wisdom for us, which is gonna help everything from our mana to the stats that we get from alchemy. So using this talent build, uh, you should see some good progress. No matter how many talent points you have, the most important thing that you can get is getting Tentai Cycle to level 200. 200 is the break point to give us every three seconds instead of every two, and that changes the game for us. Next up, we're gonna move through the worlds and make sure we grab every benefit that we can to make this build as efficient as possible. Starting with our gear, then we'll take a look at stamps, cards, and star signs. So first up is our gear. I'm primarily using the magma gear for our chest and legs and then grabbing the drop rate from the divine set. This is giving us the most damage as well as the most drop rate that we can. So we're getting drop rate from our helmet and boots using the Emperor's Opal for our two rings to give us more percent to all stats. And then the pendant that I'm using isn't actually the best for this, but I still get the most damage from it. So this is what I use. However, you could trade this off for the Strung Tooth of the Divine as this does give you more total damage and more stats since this is an active build. But back to our gear, I am using the Stingers. This is a boxing glove. 
The main reason we use this is because of how auspicious aura is placed on the ground. We want our character to actually be running up to mobs and punching them so that you're repositioning and allowing the auspicious aura to be placed more on the ground. And I'll show you this later on in the guide. But moving on to our special equipment tab, this is where we get quite a few benefits. I don't have a premium ring here. Technically the new meteor ring that gives us the 5% all stats is best in slot. However, that's on a different character for me right now. On our premium helmet, we want to use the Siege Captain hat, Siege Captain's cap, as this gives you 10% drop chance. For your trophy, you have two options. One of the Divine does give you a ton of uh, total damage and drop chance, so it's what I recommend. However, if you want to farm more money, you can use Beach Bro, as this does give you a 50% money gain. After that, I'm using Molten Cloak to get 30% more drop chance. And then my name tag is only really giving me the 4% to all stats, so it's what I personally use for this character. For your keychains, you have two choices, and this is to get either more wisdom or you can use drop chance keychains. I, I missed out on the keychains to give me the 25% drop chance, so for now I'm using the wisdom ones until something better, better comes along. For your tools, you're just looking for base stats, so the best uh, tools you can get upgraded with wisdom upgrade stones to give you more damage on this character. And then for your food slots, the main thing is going to be upgrading your speed to make sure you're hitting the movement speed cap and then your damage. You can also get some nice benefit from the golden bread to give you more coins or more money to drop. And then I personally use a ton of golden grilled cheese non-witches on all of my characters because having that percent to all stats is a huge upgrade for us. Next up is going to be our stamps, and there are four main stamps that we're looking for, and this is going to be in the alchemy section. We want alchemy speed, alchemy EXP gain, the liquid regeneration speed, and the liquid cap. After that, we have three star signs that I recommend. If you have the infinite star signs, you don't have to worry about this too much, but if you have star sign doublers, these can still be useful for you. That's going to be the overachiever for more total damage. Even if you don't have infinite star sign, the negative penalty doesn't hurt us as this is an active build. After that, 6% total damage from the feisty, and then you also have the bolt work for 20% total damage. And since we're at movement speed cap, the movement speed does not hurt us here. Next up is our cards, and the main thing we're looking for here is to get more drop chance and more crystal respawn. Crystal respawn helps us get statues, helps us get the um, special drops from it, which include the golden foods. It also helps us get more EXP per hour, which is one of the big benefits of the Bubo, is it farms EXP like crazy. So this is the recommended card set. This is using two crystal drop rate, crystal mob spawn chance cards. These are in the boosted slot, so they're getting doubled. As you can see, I have a 300% chance for crystal mobs to spawn, which makes them spawn like crazy. And then everything else is filled out with drop rate, which helps us get more mob drops. And it helps us get more money as because your drop rate does affect your money per hour. For your card set, I recommend just using the basic damage and drop rate. However, if you're planning on doing some AFKing, you can use Smoldering Plateau, um, but when you're active, I recommend Bosses and Nightmare. Moving on to World 2, we're gonna start with our Alchemy, and there is one major bubble that we're looking for. This is going to be Cook and Roadkill. What this does is give a big boost to the Cranium Cooking talent that you have. This bubble is a large bubble, so it does need to be equipped on your character, so make sure you're selecting it for your character for this to be active, unless you have the Sheepy Pet that makes all of your bubbles active. So this makes Cranium Cooking last longer, it gives more progress per kill, and it lowers the cooldown. And it also gives more Alchemy EXP. So as you can see, this is a huge bubble to upgrade. The higher you can get this, the better. Um, 3,000 levels into it with our hourly clicks gives me about 117%. It takes about... Uh, almost 9,000 points in this to get it to the maximum level, which is about 119%. So it is a long, long road if you're looking for the best gains from Cranium Cooking, but this is the big bubble for you. There's a ton of other little bubbles that will help you out with things like total wisdom to give you more damage, 
multiplying the uh, all of the small bubbles that you have and then make sure you have your points put into power of try three as this is a huge multiplier multiplier to your damage depending on how much wisdom that you have so the more wisdom the more this percentage affects you you can also get little things like drop and loads to give you a little more drop rate uh, one of the main things here is that if you're running Cranium Cooking, I recommend having characters in these slots as it does increase your brew bar. This will allow you to upgrade the boost tabs and will allow you to unlock new bubbles to ridiculous levels. Um, so right now I have all of the bubbles unlocked through World 6 and then moving on into World 8 potentially when you get up to around a billion on the kill, you'll notice that the bubble brew chance is no longer anything, 0%. Uh, so I can't unlock any more bubbles at this time. There's also a ton of vials that will give you a lot of good progress in uh, throughout the game. Uh, two of them that I'm going to point out is first the uh, dieter drink to give you more money, since that is one of the benefits of this build. You might as well capitalize on it. Um, and then the other big thing is going to be the slower G drink, which gives you more multi-kill for your tier. So since we're stacking damage and killing things, we want as much multi-kill as we can. There are other vials, but all of them are pretty minor in comparison. Moving on to post office, we have three kind of mandatory boxes, uh, and then everything else becomes more about increasing your damage and your other gains. So we're starting with our first two big ones, which is the mana box to give you faster cooldowns. This gives you a 10% cooldown reduction on cranium cooking, as well as your attack skills, which means more cranium cooking per hour as you have more uptime. After that, the next big one is going to be the alchemy box to give you 30 seconds more in cranium cook time, as well as more brewing speed and alchemy EXP. From here, this starts becoming more optional, uh, but I do recommend having this as it's going to increase everything. The drop box gives you more drop rarity, which is gonna help our drop monster drops, as well as our um, the amount of money that we're making. But a big thing on here is the crystal mob spawn chance, as this is gonna give you more crystal mobs, which gives you more EXP and more overall loot. After that, it's completely optional. Things like the fight box for more base damage, more uh, boost food effect from all of the things, which gives us more damage, movement speed, uh, money from the golden bread. And then on tab two, you have a few more things like the damage box again, 9% total damage is nice. Basic attack speed gets us moving around a little bit more for our auspicious aura. And then the utility box gives us more multi-kill per tier, as well as more cash from mobs. If you have a ton of points left over for a post office, the divine gives you more wisdom. And then of course the myriad crate to give you more base stats. So that's the main recommendations in the post office. And we're taking a look at our obols next. For our obols, we have two main options here and that is going full drop rate. So as many drop rate obols as you can to give you the best drop chance for your mob drops, which also increases our money chance or you can choose to put some money obols in, such as the golden obol of plentiful riches, which can give us up to 11% money each, or the uh, the grand frogger obol, which can give us 12% and a 1% drop chance. This is considered best in slot for this build. Um, however, they are pretty rare to drop. So I recommend using a full drop rate and then having their money obols for your square obols. And then same thing on your family tab. We're just looking for as much drop rate as we can get. Um, generally, you don't want AFK gains if you're trying to maximize your build uh, for damage and for active play. However, we have nine other characters, so I do use the AFK gains so that all of my characters can benefit more. So this will give you a ton of drop chance, 198% here, as well as 67% more money using this setup. So next up is our prayers in World 3. This is the main thing for World 3. There are some benefits from things like the Salt Lick and from leveling up your Death Note, but it's mainly prayers in World 3. So the main thing that we're looking for here is going to be the Jawbreaker Prayer, which increases our money per hour. Um, this does increase your monster's max HP, so it's not recommended if you don't have enough damage to one-shot the mobs. 
Um, if you do, you can start stacking up things like Midas Minded to get more drop rate. This is slightly better than Jawbreaker, so make your choice on that if you're having to choose one or the other. And then I make sure I'm using Balance of Pain to get more multi-kill per damage tier. Um, this really depends on how much damage you have as to if this is effective or not. And make sure you're not getting one shot by the mobs you're trying to kill because this does reduce your defense. After that, you look at things like uh, more class EXP from Big Brain Time, and then also Unending Energy. This is an active build, so we don't get hurt by the curse here, which makes us only allowed to AFK for 10 hours. But if you're gonna be away from any for any amount of time, make sure you turn this off. I also really recommend running Rucksack when you're doing this build. We don't care about AFK gain rates, um, but, this does give us more carry capacity as we're going to be killing a ton of mobs and having the carry capacity, make sure you don't fill up your screen with mob drops. And this will allow you to keep more of those mob drops to keep upgrading those alchemy vials and other things like that. I also recommend running Tachyon of the Titans as we do have a ton of drop rate on this build. So we might as well get our free time candies while we're doing our other farming. Also on World 3 is going to be your Equinox upgrades. There are two main drops, or main things we're trying to upgrade here. The first is going to be Liquid Vestment. This is huge, guys, for leveling up your cauldrons, your liquid cauldrons. This allows us to generate liquid over our cap. So if we have a cap of 1,000 and we generate, we keep generating liquid, 99% of that gets invested back into the liquid cauldrons automatically. This is shown on your liquid cauldrons by going over the cap. So as you can see, I only need 186,000 to level this up, but I've got 3 million in excess, which allows us to get quite a few levels into our cauldrons. And as you can see, the it, every one of the cauldrons will get upgraded like this, and you can get a ton of levels. So from here, we're gonna upgrade our capacity. My max cap right now is 6,009 with a few upgrades into this. We're, uh, we actually push it up to 6,098 here. And then our rate, we're at 166 on our rate, and this is going to upgrade it to 169. So a little more liquid per hour. The big thing is, is this continues to scale. The more that you upgrade your rate by doing this method, the more liquid you're gonna generate, which means you're going to be able to continue getting more levels into your liquids by running a cranium cooking build. So it's huge for making more liquid per hour. Uh, the other one that I recommend is upgrading faux jewels as this does give you up to 80% more drop rate. I am missing the Bob Joe pickle vial still, which would give me another five levels for about 105% more drop rate, which gives us another one times multiplier, which helps our money, it helps our mob drops. So good gains overall. Moving on to world four, we're taking a look at lab. The main thing I can say about lab is make sure you have your bonuses active. There's one major bonus and that's going to be the fungi uh, finger pocketer, which gives us more money from the mobs that we've, or for every million G mush kills we've gotten. So with uh, a ridiculous amount of G mush kills, I think it's at 120 billion or something like that. It's giving me 406,000% more money. Um, so make sure you have this active to generate more money. And then the other thing is make sure you do not activate the liquid right here. The main thing with this is it does slow down your liquid regeneration rate. And since we're doing cranium cooking, we're generating way more liquid than we need. And with the new Equinox upgrade, we want that extra regeneration to keep upgrading our rate in our cap. And we want it to go over that fill bar. So by using the cranium cooking build, you do not need Viaduct of the Gods. Uh, even though it does increase your cap, it slows down your overall generation of your liquids. So make sure this is turned off. Just move your characters out of the way if you have King Doot, um, but make sure you don't activate that. Other than that, make sure your bonuses are active as they're all going to help you. The other thing in the lab is to make sure you have a Choco Chip. The Choco Chip is the big deal for us. This gives a 75% chance to spawn a crystal mob when one of them dies. So we're stacking up our crystal mob chances and then we want to run our Choco Chip because we kill crystal mobs so fast and they keep respawning, which helps our overall drops. It helps by giving more monsters on the map. 
and that means you're getting more cranium cooking progress because every crystal mob you kill also counts towards cranium cooking. So it is important that you have the choco chip. After that, I run every one of the doublers, our card doublers, our star sign doubler, pendant doubler. Um, so your doublers are gonna be your big deal here. So the main thing in the chips is that you run your choco chip on your active character. A quick note for breeding, the main thing that you want to upgrade for your shiny pets is your infinite star signs to make sure you have enough all of your star signs covered. Multi-kill per tier isn't bad from here. Bonuses from meals, total damage, your drop rate. Uh, there's a ton of little benefits that you can get from your shinies, so make sure you're not ignoring this as it does help even your cranium cooking. So we don't forget about the dinner menu. There are a few little upgrades in here, such as more money from the monsters, from the salad, more total damage from Turkey and a few others. But one of the big benefits is going to be at the very bottom, you have the pumpkin and the kiwi fruit, which is going to increase your liquid caps, which means more liquids to spend in alchemy. So it's always a good thing to continue upgrading your dinner menu. In World 5, the first thing up is Sailing. Sailing has a few really good artifacts to increase your damage, such as Socrates, the True Lantern, and the Opera Mask. There are a few others to help with your damage. But one thing I want to point out is the uh, Manica Cat, which gives you more coins from all monsters from your highest leveled character. So my highest level is this character at 595. It's really easy to level up a character on your Bubonic Conjurer since you're leveling up grind time and other things like that. So you get a ton of extra cash from leveling up your Bubo or other characters using the Manakai Cat, which is a total of 6% more coins per level of your highest class. As you can see, it stacks up quite high for making sure you have this artifact unlocked. For Divinity, I think there's a couple choices depending on whether or not you have the King Dute Companion. The If you do not have King Dute, I recommend running Arctis to let this character be in the, uh, the lab, as this will allow you to get benefits from your printer samples, um, connect to bonuses easier, which frees up another character. The other options are going to be if you have King Dute, I recommend either running Harit for more money, and this is gonna help increase your money gains since we're running a build that, in, that focuses on money and things like that. Or we can choose to run the Elephant God as this does give us more class EXP. So either of those two will help you, but neither of them are going to make or break this build. So that is my suggestions for Divinity. So the last piece of the puzzle for the Cranium Cooking build is going to be setting up your action bar properly. I know this sounds kind of weird, but having your actions in a specific order actually does affect your AFK gains. So the main priority is going to be having raised dead in your first slot. This makes it where it's the first priority to be triggered, which means mobs are respawning as fast as they possibly can. The negative is, is sometimes some of our other abilities don't get uh, used as often as possible, but the gains are still best in my experience having raised dead in the first slot. The next up is going to be having cranium cooking so that every chance you can activate this, it can be activated. One thing to keep in mind though with this build is if you're going to be doing something before you do a cranium cook run, make sure you take this off your action bar so that you don't waste this in a zone like Kilroy, for example. So, but make sure you have cranium cooking second so that this gets used as often as possible to make sure you're getting all of the alchemy gains. After that, you have Auspicious Aura and Flatulent Spirit. These two are interchangeable depending on the map and the map size. So if you take a look at something like the Tremor Worms, where the map is fairly condensed, the mobs are in range, you can use the Auspicious Aura first, as this is going to give you maximum coverage throughout this map. However, if they're using a map such as the Frogs in World 1, um, this map is very spread out. There's a ton of platforms. So we actually want the Flatulent Spirit first so that the Flatulent Spirit will roam to these other platforms and we're not solely relying on Aus Auspicious Aura to do all of our damage for us. So depending on the map that you use, you may be swapping these two around. 
So the last thing on my action bar is I always keep telekinetic storage here. This is mainly because of caps in your inventory. So if your inventory fills up while you've AF, that you, while you've active overnight, then you'll have a ton of loot on the ground and this causes a lot of lag. So having a one button option to deposit my inventory and clear the map helps prevent other issues like the game crashing. So this is the action bar that I set up. You will drop plenty of poison gas clouds just using the flatulent spirit. You will actually lose DPS time and alchemy progress time by putting chemical warfare on your bar. You do not want this to be active on your bar. We're just using this to make the flatulent spirit you do more damage. So nothing else goes on your bar. This is going to give you the best alchemy gains. So we're gonna to head to a map and get this started so you can kind of see how everything adds up together for us. And what's gonna happen is it's going to be a fairly slow buildup at first. You may end up wasting the first cranium cooking. So a lot of people spend some time priming the map before they auto. Priming the map means you're just killing manually by activating your abilities, making sure your flatulent spirits go out and get the poison gas clouds going. This takes about a minute or two to really get the gas everywhere, but it's worth it in the end, especially if you're running this for long periods of time. So as you can see, as the flatulent spirits move across the map, they're dropping gas everywhere. We're using our boxing gloves so that we're spreading out our auspicious aura and they're not dropping in the same place because in a map like this, the staff can reach to the other end of the map and you end up dropping all of your auspicious auras right on the rope. So as you can see, we can move down to the bottom of the map and they've even spread gas down here at some points and our auspicious aura is doing most of our killing until we get the gas running everywhere. So this kind of looks like what an in-game cranium cooking setup looks like, and you'll notice a ton of gains. One big thing that I haven't covered at this point is the amount of damage that you do. As you can see, every mob on this map is dying in one hit. The health bars that you see running around are all the flatulent spirits. None of the mobs are able to survive. This is really important that you're using a map that you can one-shot the mobs so that your raised dead is getting the most number of mobs raised every second that this is going off. Um, it's actually around two to three seconds that it goes off just because of the tick delays in the game. But that's the main points here. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button and drop a comment if you're enjoying our videos. And a huge shout out to our patrons. Your support means the world to us. And if you would like to become a patron, check out the link in the description for more details. And be sure to visit our merch store so you can get some pretty cool stuff. If you have any thoughts or questions, let us know down below and we'll see you next time.